Hey there, YouTube land, and we we're going to do a couple reviews tonight, but uh, Matthew just picked up the new uh, Batman game. I did. Batman Arkham Knight Tank Edition. Uh, <laughs> maybe we'll do a video on that later. But tonight we're just doing a quick review on the movie From Whisper to a Scream, an anthology film, one of the later anthology films done in the uh, late 80s with uh, Jeff Burr, who directed uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, Leatherface, and uh, films like Pumpkin to 2, among many, many others. But, uh... I hadn't seen this one in a while, and it I remembered like certain things about it, but uh, my son he actually Matt here he remembered like a lot more about it than I did yeah every like I could only remember the first story at first, and then like progressively every single time the next story came on, I was like, oh, this one, I remember <laughs> this one, this is the one with like this twist, so we'll go through I guess each story slightly and yeah. then our thoughts on it, and then we'll say which story like best, yeah. and let's have it overall, I guess. Yeah, yes. So the uh, wraparound started really unusually. Martine Beswick from uh, Dr. Jekyll's Sister Hyde, the Hammer film, and many, many other films, she was actually a very attractive lady, was shown at the beginning in kind of like a, was it a bath or shower type sequence? Sort of. Basically, yeah. well, like, kind of like, almost like, it was hinted, kind of like hints of nudity were going to be there. And which wouldn't seem odd, because Martine Beswick has, you know, been naked in a, in a few films so it seemed really strange when they didn't actually go that way and instead we saw her dance with none the script actor and next thing we saw her in was a was a uh, was an electric chair yeah that's true we got to see a short appearance by Lawrence Tierney from Reservoir Dogs uh, and again many other things uh, and you know he was pretty much Lawrence Tierney and uh, so she was killed well Susan Trell and the actress Susan Trell played a reporter who was there to like uh, pretty much I guess document the final the final moments of that girl, yeah. so, which sets off the story of the girl, Martine Beswick is the niece the daughter of of Vincent Price, and Susan Trell is playing a reporter that's going back to inventory Vincent Price and he's like a librarian, and learn more about Oldfield. So basically, what happens first is she says, he says that basically no, this isn't her fault. The town is evil and breeds evil. And uh, then we get into the first story, and he's going to tell you this one. Am I? Yep, yeah, yeah. Shit. Spoiler right. time. Um, it's going to be spoilers. Cool. Uh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> did I put you on the spot? You did, and you forget that I'm like half asleep. Uh, but uh, it's uh, one about a guy, super like nerdy older guy who's like, who's living his, his like day's job like with uh he lives you know just like doing his job and stuff like that he's got a sister a sister who's got i forget what type of condition she mentions it but like it's like rheumatitis or something, like, something that. like that but she has to he has to take care of her and bathe her every day and we should mention that it's probably by like clue gallagher who's actually a really big like character actor yeah he was the father in, in friday 13 and nightmare Elm Street part two and uh, as many other things and of course that was his wife playing his sister yeah uh and, but he's got a crush on a, like, uh, an attractive uh, female co-worker. Grace. Yeah. Is it Grace? Yeah, it's yeah. Grace or something like that. Uh, who he, he, like, he sends flowers to her and, like, love letters and all this business. And, uh... Right the song. <laughs> uh, and he, like, he finally, like, convinces her to go on a date with him. And she's just a... Mm, terrible to him. <laughs> He's a bitch. <laughs> yeah, so it's a bitch. So, uh, he kills her. He kills her. Well, one thing we gotta mention is that he has dreams of having sex with dead bodies. Yes, he does. Yeah, it's nightmares, I guess. Yeah, well, I mean, he has one, really, where it's a prevalent, and then a second, like, midday daydream where, like, the, like Grace gonna... is just, like, blood coming out of her mouth. It's like kind of a fantasy he's having of this type of thing. It's weird. It's really weird. But, uh... Terrence Knox has a small role in that, too, you know? The, uh, he plays kind of like the... I guess the better-looking co-worker. Uh, he's more of a like, crass one, wasn't he? Yeah. But I guess that for... That's the whole thing. He's supposed to be, like, younger and maybe slightly more crass. And I guess the uh, the more attractive one, in a way, mm -hmm. I kind of expected something to come of that. And but I was no, really not really. It. The twist of this story is the most disturbing and morbid. 
Oh, well, yeah, first he has he has sex with a girl in a coffin. <laughs> Nobody comes in. I yeah, mean, he's this. there. He drinks wine with her. Like he has a big long speech about her and her life and stuff like that. And alone in a church. <laughs> and yeah, how did that? How does that work? I mean, like no idea. She like, was like a, a well. I guess she was a fairly well respected member of the community, or at least a young member. You think there'd be a lot of people at her funeral? A lot but of everybody, like, but you think the priest would at least show up for that? <laughs> uh, it's his church. So, uh, but no, uh, but the twist for that one is, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Basically. Nine months later. Not yet, nine months <laughs> really, later. Really, on the screen comes nine months later. Nine and months so, later. If you can't figure the twist from there. He kills his sister. That was random. Yeah, it's kind of random. <clears throat> uh, and then a gross undead baby <laughs> attacks him <laughs> and reveals itself to be his child with the dead body of that girl. So even if the baby was just what born, why would it be a dis- be one? Why would it be that big? Two? Why would it be able to speak? It was. And well, why it, would it know that it was his dad? I don't know. It was a messed up like, of, like none of the other stories go to this level of like. Well, <laughs> that's kind of just. <laughs> what? It was. It wasn't a bad story. No, not at all. And Clue Gallagher Street. did a great job actually in that role. I think he really just, like threw himself into it. It's busy straightforward in a way. Yeah, a bit uh, too, like, telegraphing sometimes. Yeah. And I think there were some lost opportunities there. Yeah. Now, this was a very low-budget film, so we had to take that into consideration with things with stories. Oh, you have <laughs> uh, But, uh... But, uh... Second story, I guess, because the first story was, was good, it was straightforward, and it was the most disturbing of them all, probably. Hmm. Now, the second story, actually, for me, is the most disturbing of them all. Is it the most... For a very different oh, reason. Oh, yeah. Because uh, it stars uh, it's Terry Kaiser, right? That's from uh, you know, Weekend. yeah, it's Terry Kaiser. I know that he was in a. Uh, oh God, what's the name of the movie? Uh, Friday Thirteenth Part Seven. He played the doctor, mm. and uh, he was like the strength, a really prickish guy. And he's not much nicer in this one here, but I actually wanted him to shoot his girlfriend that was leaving him and set him up for all this crap that happened in the first place. She, apparently. Girl's not nice usually in this film uh, for some reason. The girl in this one is not nice either. And this one I think is set up in the 50s, right? Yeah. From, from the, the clothing and all that. So there's these guys. Apparently also got some money. Screwed over some gangsters. He's a con man. He's run away. He gets shot in the shoulder or the heart type thing, I think, really. Yeah. And he falls into this like boat on the, on the bayou. And uh, that sounds like a song, you know, floating the bayou. It probably is. Um, and uh, he, he's saved by, uh, well, uh, by a guy, a mysterious guy. Yeah. Who seems to be sort of like, uh, he's sage and wise. And, you know, he takes a man, takes care of him. And eventually, uh, he gets better. Yeah. And you, you take it from here. And they live happily ever after. That is totally what happens. Uh, no, uh, he he sees the guy doing some voodoo business, and uh, he suspects that this guy does perhaps do the voodoo business. Uh, and he sees all of his voodoo business materials all about. And he makes a comment about seeing buffaloes, and the guy's like, Buffaloes? We haven't had buffaloes since you're an immortal, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, well, he finds a suitcase, and he yeah, says he like, finds a suitcase hundreds of years of like, like old newspaper clippings. Like yeah, so he's like, "You're a fucking immortal." So he's like, "Tell me how to be an immortal." And the guys like, "No, I can't. that can be only one. You can't. <laughs> you can't know how to be immortal." So he tries to kill the immortal guy. Stupidly. Yeah. So where's your magic water that I know you've been drinking to stay alive for all these years? Give me all that magic water. We make money on it. And then the immortal comes back because immortal. And, like, smacks him down and explains, hey, guess what? You actually already have it in you. That was the only way for me to save you. Uh, you won't live forever, but with the juices you already got in you now, you should live, no matter what, for another 80 years. Yeah, 70. 70, right. 70. 70, 70. Uh, so then he puts gasoline all over him, starts hacking at him with an axe, and sets him on fire. And we get this disturbing ending where we see... Like, where these doctors say, wow, like, his body's totally messed up. His, like, 
his every, like he's missing mo almost all of his limbs. His body is entirely burnt to his crisp, like to a crisp. His face and everything's gone and stuff like that. He's in constant agony, and the, like doctors are like, they're like, "Whoa, we can't do anything for him." So all we got to do is like pray that he dies sometime soon, and we get like a close up in on him like crying as he's like grossly deformed and. That was disturbing. That was disturbing. that was messed up. Was that was a more disturbing fucking... ending than like creepy baby in the yeah. Both were strange. Necrophilia baby. This fucking entire movie was, <laughs> except for like the third story, was entirely just like ooh. Now the third story. There's always the weakest story in this uh, one here, and this one here has Rosalind Cash actually, and she reminded me of the girl from uh, from Orange Is New Black, the second season, the girl played by. I think it was by a character that was like kind of took over the prison and basically is killed at the end of the end of the second season. Or we, I think she is. I haven't watched the third season of Orange is New Black yet. And basically it's about this guy's a glass eater. And uh, he falls off this kind of hot chick that uh, was only ever been in two movies. I checked that out actually. And he's creepy as hell. Yeah. Oh, the, the girl? Yeah. I got these flowers that I <laughs> yeah, for you. A... I like tied them together with my own hair. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty weird. And so basically, he's a glass eater, and everybody in this in this here, like uh, this carnival type thing, this traveling freak show, they were all been brought there by this girl, Rosen Cash, and she's kind of like I guess maybe like a voodoo priestess type of thing. She actually has done things so that they have to stay. She made one person no face, and let's not get into that makeup. Uh, one person she's given an eye in his chest, just some really weird. That was a stupid scene. <laughs> yeah. Like, he I has... know. He, there's never mentioned he just gets knocked over at one point. He opens like his shirt and he's like, I can still see you. It's not like anybody knocked out his other two eyes. <laughs> no, it's just... They're fine up there. But he just wanted to make sure you knew that he can see you a third time with his chest eye. Yeah. Amazing. I can imagine so many people come to see the chest eye guy at the sideshow. So love is apparently going to prevail because he's going to be with this attractive but really strange girl no matter what. Yeah. But the girl doesn't like that. The voodoo priestess, uh, our base runner of the carnival, doesn't like it, and she uh, so shit prevails instead. Yeah, it's a pretty crappy story. Um, he dies, I think. Yeah, yeah, like pretty much everything that he's eaten, I guess digesting, and it's not a thing. Yeah, because you know the acids should really digest it after a while. But I'm guessing yeah, for some, some reason it just out of his hands. I don't understand how his like digestive tract works. Yeah, but it comes out of his entire body. It's like his face. It comes everywhere. Like just, it's just stuff coming out. Food, I'm assuming, just is generally thrown into your body and lands anywhere it wants eventually. I'm guessing they're saying, hey, you know, this would be a cool scene. Well, not really. Uh, yeah, maybe it might be a cool scene if there's a cool story to go along with it, but it's not really. It's pretty straightforward. At the end of the thing, we see that the girl, what's her name again? Amaryllis? Amaryllis, or like Amaryllis. Amaryllis, is her yeah. So uh, she's in the carnival now. She's one of the freaks. She has a hide from the from the police as well because she's she was the Pretty much, she's the pin girl. She's, she's a pin, pin cushion. cushion the human pin cushion. Come or, see the human pin cushion. It's really or not a good see story. The eyeball chest guy. <laughs> yeah, because everybody wants the eyeball chest guy. Uh, no, it wasn't a good story. There was like no really big payoff. It didn't come off like the Tales from the Cryptian ones, like the first two did. Fourth story, I guess, because the third story really doesn't. There's nothing to say other than it was not good. The four stories had Cameron Mitchell on. Actually, yeah, it was Children of the Corn. Uh, have you ever Children. seen Children of the Corn? You've seen the It was story. Children of the Corn. <laughs> you can watch it. It was, it was like a violent or Children of the Corn with maybe less shit. It's Civil War version of Children of the Corn. Yeah, Civil War version of Children of the Corn. Uh, with, with a little bit more mutilating and... Uh, What's a mutilating Children of the Corn? Was, Remember the opening sequence in the, in the first in the movie? Yeah. Where they like go into the diner and just like kill all the... Yeah, all but stuff. they're just killing people. There's no like... Ripping out eyeballs and stabbing people. Oh, you people. really love it. He's, I he's, don't like eyeballs. He doesn't like those eyeball scenes in films. Eyeballs so, so I was like, there's an eyeball scene in this one. And he's like, no, why'd you have to go there? I don't like eyeballs. And scenes. yeah, that was like. But okay. fucking. Also, Children of the Corn is a terrible movie. I just, I don't, it's we, a franchise. It was, it's like uh, seven of them or something. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's a good movie. We'll watch the franchise. Sometime. No, we won't. Yes, we will. <laughs> we watched the first one and I was like, yeah, that's it. If the first one's not hit on half, this is really going low. Uh. But uh, it's a, it's sort of a more brutal Children of the Corn, honestly. Instead of like he who walks between the rows, or a weird like animated uh, corn demon monster at the end, like in Children of the Corn. That was the biggest letdown of it, and the acting is really good in this story, actually. Uh, except for well, some of the kids are, but they're kids, so yeah. you can't really, you know. But uh, 
Some kids are not strong actors. Cameron yeah. Mitchell does a great job playing this extremely. Oh, I mean, I'm not crazy. I'm not. It's extremely I slimy, unlikable guy. But he does such a good job with the role. you got to really admire what he does. Yeah. And uh, it's just, he's insane in this film. And uh, perfect. There's not a, a likable thing with the guy. And the cool thing is that he does it so well. And he draws, like, one of the characters in there. Basically, the, he's a, uh, it's in the Civil War times. You know, they're side the one. They're talking about they're going to go home and rape a bunch of girls. <laughs> really, this is what they say. Uh, but they get, like, uh, they hit some, some mines, basically. And uh, they end up uh, with the, with this uh, group of like kids. Yeah. There's only kids in this town, and they said keep talking about the magistrate. Someone like this mysterious magistrate character that they have to see every night. There's a meeting with the magistrate, so they haven't, he has not met the magistrate. And uh, he, this girl see, thinks he looks a lot like her uh, her passed on father, and she starts to like uh, g get a bond with him. He takes advantage of that bond, and he eventually kills her. This little kid, well, kissing her, sort of. It's weird. Yeah, this it's, movie it's is, it's yeah. movie's kind of dark and weird. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a good, I don't like it though. Uh, but uh, that story was pretty decent. The magistrate reveal was really lame. Yeah. I didn't I didn't get much out of that. Well, to be, the only reason it's super duper lame uh, is because it's just a weird anti-war message. Where it's, dude, your war has killed all of our parents. Oh, it killed every parent and... Then it like so the war is over. Yeah, the kid's looping back to the line because the other guy was like, "The war is over. We can stop now." And he shot the guy at the beginning because he was like, "I don't care." Like, It'll never be over as yeah. long as there's big people. Yeah. So now we go back to the wraparound again, and uh, Vincent Price and Susan Terrell are, are there, or Susan Terrell. She's uh, been talking to, to the all these super stories. hammy lines. <laughs> But Vincent Price does a good job with the Superman. I don't understand. Like, some of them just don't make any sense. Uh, Dude. Which, you said that they were like... Have you ever seen the lyrics of Fre Frankenstein? Oh, I know, but... So... Do you really want to compare anything to the lyrics of Frankenstein? <laughs> anyway. That's a cult classic, you know. Uh, but, yeah, their the lines are super hammy. Vincent Price does a good job, though. Uh, if anybody can pull off lines like these, it's Vincent Price. The last line, though, has to really be the worst. <laughs> But anyway, so she, it turns out that she it was friends with. So frame dropped. Yup. Yep. I yeah. And we're at the last segment with Susan Trump, like Vincent a, Price. Yes. And it's very cheesy. Like you said, the lines were super hammy. Yeah. We we're just getting what we had in there before because we're not yeah, sure. Yeah, we don't know if we said this already. It's gonna be like a weird run-on sentence where we're like, do you remember that part with Susan Trell? Then Susan Trell did that part. You remember well, that? Yeah. So basically, she she kills Vincent Price because stuff. We don't know why. There's no real. She She's did. really just like I was friendsish kind of with Eunice, and she said you were a bitch. So <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm guessing revenge. Yeah, and then she throws her silly putty knife into his neck. <laughs> yeah, the knife actually kind of bobs <laughs> up and down. <laughs> uh, but and it's oh, it's it's bad. So overall, for me. Uh, Stories one and two were the best, with the two being the strongest story because they had the strongest acting. And uh, Clue Gallagher did an amazing job. It was a tour de force role for Clue Gallagher in his story, but I did really like the story overall. Just had a better structure. The second one seemed to be best, the best structure of all the stories. Uh, three, uh, I wasn't a big fan of, and four, I, I liked Cameron Mitchell, but overall the story really didn't lead, do a lot for me. The wraparound was okay. It was super cheesy. But Susan Terrell and Vincent Price are good actors, and they were able to pull it off. It was a weak end to the wraparound, but overall, I really did enjoy the movie. What about you? Uh, one was good. Two was real good, uh, with a nice dark twist. Three was a shit. <laughs> uh, the fourth one was decent. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't bad. Uh, it was all right, you know. I'm not, like, a super big Children of the Corner fan, and that's what that was, so... Uh, and the wraparounds were fun because it's Vincent Price. And they're in, what's that town called again? Oldfield. Oldfield. I bet. And we get to learn the history of Oldfield. Yes, we do. I bet I know what your singer's going to be, by the way. You know what my singer's going to be. <laughs> yeah, I almost used it once I did, but I didn't on purpose. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but uh, from Whisper to a Scream on its own, 
I would probably give it like a, either a, a two point. No, I'll give it a three. I give it a three. Yeah, three five. All right. But the Blu-ray itself, because uh, you know I've actually watched more of this Blu-ray than uh, I have. The documentary Welcome to Oldfield, which I already reviewed on this channel, which uh, Return to Oldfield, basically is a is a feature length documentary, and it's really, really freaking good. And it alone would be worth owning this this Blu-ray. This is one I recommend that you get in there. Yeah, uh, I mean, I like anthologies, so. Yeah, you gotta have to, and you gotta get the t Tales from the Crypt Photo Horror one, too. It's on, on I'm gonna, gotta, I'm gonna order in, like, the full Tales from the Dark Side sometime soon, maybe. And, yeah, that one's everything. Yeah, and the mo full Monsters. Oh, great show. That's my yeah. favorite show. Yeah. It's really goddamn good. But, and there's another documentary on there, another full length documentary on about Super 8 filmmaking, which I haven't watched yet. I don't watch that one down the road, but it is a really packed stuff. We talked about features in that. That's a shit done. Look at that. That's a fun. Yeah, it's more content than in the third fucking. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you give the? the, the I gave it a three. You, yeah, you, three's uh, fine. Three is a good, a good. Three, three what? Four, like three silly putty knives out of. Three silly five. putty knives out of, out of five. And uh, for me right now, before I go to bed, because you know he's getting tired, so I'm gonna probably be I going to bed. I've only slept like an hour. He's like been playing Batman all day. day. We gotta do a Batman. Review, you know? Yeah, well, I'm almost Again. done. So, uh, yeah, we got some interesting things to say about the Batman game. Yeah. Good stuff, bad stuff. Uh, but it's a pretty awesome game. Yeah, it is. Oh, lots of tanks. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, for me right now, uh, say hello to the great Pin Lord in the sky, oh, his yes, friend the yes. Phantom, and his new friend, the creature from Black Lagoon, which you um, haven't seen yet, I'll show you that after. Yeah. And uh, for me right now, it's. Uh, it's time for tea. Welcome to Old Field. Oh man, that's the last line of the film. It is. <laughs> Alternatively, I was gonna do. If you had a whole lifetime, you would be able to read all the books in here, or sorry, read all the history of this town. What does what? that even mean? <laughs> okay. If up? you had a full lifetime, I'm pretty sure I do. Okay. You'd be able to read books. Yes, I would. But well, depending on, on the length of your lifetime, too. I mean, like, what's yeah. a full lifetime? Okay. Also, like, he didn't say, like, you wouldn't be able to. He says, like, if you had a full lifetime, you'd be able to read, like, the, all the history of this town. <laughs> it's, it's well, one, I have a full lifetime. Thanks, man. Unless you know <laughs> something I don't. And two, what the fuck does that mean? I, I'm sure if you had a full lifetime, you could read the full Harry Potter series <laughs> and then maybe some other books. Yeah, probably could do that. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, too. You can read Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Time for tea. Have a great night. I ruined my stinger, so later. <laughs> <laughs>